Okay, in this section, I'm going to show you how to use something called the Hardy-Weinberg formula, um, and it deals with what's called population genetics. So population genetics sort of relates genetics to evolution. And Hardy-Weinberg law, or Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, basically says that if you were to add up all the alleles in a population, that's called the gene pool. And the gene pool can be described mathematically by the frequency of the genes. In other words, how common are the different alleles in a population? In other words, if we were to go back to genetics, um, we might have a gene B, or a, a big B uh, and little b, two alleles. So they're saying instead of big B, we're going to use P to represent that allele, and instead of little b, we're going to use Q to represent that allele. And mathematically, we could figure out how common these alleles were in the population. If we added up all the copies of big B and all the copies of little b, they would add up to one, or the frequency of those would add up to one. Um, there's also a formula, p squared plus 2pq plus q squared is equal to one. In other words, if we were to cross big B little b with big B little b, we would get this. We would get big B big B, big B little b, big B little b, little b little b. And wouldn't it be that we would get one fourth big B big b, half or two fourths big B little b, a fourth little b little b, and if you add all those together, they'd add up to one. Well, if you replace the b's with p and q, then pq times pq, sorry, would give us p squared, um, pq, 2pq, pq twice, and q squared, and if you were to add them all up, the frequencies of all of those would add up to one. So that's where they got this formula. Um, now, on the AP formula sheet, they tell you this formula. They tell you that P represents the frequency of the dominant allele, and Q is the recessive allele. And they also tell you that P plus Q, when they are added together, equal 1. What they don't tell you on the formula sheet, so therefore you need to know, is the part I just explained to you. That P squared would represent the frequency of individuals who were homozygous dominant, or big B, big B. 2PQ would represent the frequency of individuals that are heterozygous. In other words, what frequency of individuals are big B, little b? And Q squared represents the frequency of individuals that are homozygous recessive or little b, little b. So um, I'm going to show you in a second how this applies mathematically, but the biggest mistake people make is they get P and P squared mixed up with each other. So if in a problem they say something about how the frequency of an allele or a gene, you see these key words, they're talking about P and Q, how common the gene or allele is in the population. If they say something about individuals that have black fur or white fur or individuals that are homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive, if they say anything about individuals or showing a trait, so, um, showing a trait, or they say something about, um, you know, individuals, then they're going to be talking about P squared, 2PQ, or Q squared. So it's really important to be able to distinguish. And I'll show you in, a, in the math how this applies. So again, on the AP exam, they're going to give you this, they're going to give you this, and they're going to give you this. But they're not going to tell you this. So make sure you know what P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared represents. So that's going to be essential to answering these. And this is a very common thing that they'll use for gridded questions or short answer questions. All right. Uh, this is just showing, again, how they got the formula. If we replace big B and little b with P and Q, we get P squared, 2PQ, and Q squared. Now, what's the point of Hardy-Weinberg? Well, first of all, if a population stays the same, in other words, I go into a population of moths, I count how many of them are black, and I find that 10% are black. If the population is in what we call Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, then that would mean that those percents should stay the same. That if 10% were black and I come back in 10 years, 10% should still be black. And in 50 years, 10% should still be black. The idea is that it gives us a mathematical way to see if a population is evolving. In other words, if I come back in 10 years and 10% isn't black, now it's 5% or now it's 15%, it tells me evolution is happening. Something has caused the population to change. 
Is it a mutation? Is it natural selection? Did somebody migrate in or out? You know, what's going on? That is what we would have to figure out. But if the population has changed, then it shows me, these, if numerically it has changed, it shows me the population's not in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, and it tells me that evolution is happening. So that's the point of this formula, is that it can tell me, number one, I can predict the frequency of how many are homozygous dominant or recessive, and then I can look at different time periods and decide if the frequencies are staying the same or if the frequencies are changing. So let's apply this. So remember, the formulas you would be provided with, P plus Q equals 1, and P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared equals 1. So the first question they give us here is, if P is equal to 0.7, what percent of individuals are heterozygous? Well, remember, heterozygous individuals, they're asking us for 2PQ. So if you have P, how do we get to 2PQ? Honestly, what I've seen, you never end up using this second formula. You have to know what these represent, but I've never seen where you actually had to plug numbers into it. You always end up using this first formula, P plus Q equals 1. So if P plus Q is equal to 1, and we know that P is 0.7, then we can find that Q is 0.3. And once you have P and Q, we can get pretty much anything they ask for. So they want to know what percent of individuals are heterozygous. Well, heterozygous is 2PQ. So literally 2 times 0.7 times 0.3, and that's going to give us 0.42. Since they asked for a percent, that would be 42%. You just multiply your frequency times 100. So if they ask for the frequency, that's going to be your decimal. If they were to ask for the percent, you just multiply by 100. All right, our second problem. 16% of a population of cats have white fur, meaning they show the recessive trait. So the information that they're giving us here is Q squared. Remember, Q squared is the frequency of homozygous recessive. They're not giving us Q. If they said something about the frequency of the recessive allele was 16%, or 0.16, yes. So 16% of the population show the recessive trait. That means that Q squared is not 16%, but 0.16. Remember, to get a frequency from a percent, you divide by 100. To get a percent from a frequency, you multiply by 100. So they want the frequency of P, and they want to know, um, it says how many individuals, but that's, that's not right. Um, they, what we should change that to, because we don't know how big the population is. The frequency of heterozygous and homozygous dominant. All right, so Q squared is 0.16. This happens to be a really easy number to work with. To get Q from Q squared, we simply take the square root. So that would mean Q would be 0.4. Now again, since P plus Q is equal to 1, we know that P would therefore be 0.6, which was the first question they asked us, was the frequency of P, so that would be 0.6. The second question, the frequency of heterozygous, that's 2PQ, so again, this is going to be 2 times 0.6 times 0.4, which is going to give me 0.48. So this is our heterozygous. And then homozygous dominant, again, remember, is P squared. So P was 0.6. So 0.6 squared is 0.36. So notice, again, that you don't have to actually plug numbers into this P squared plus 2 PQ plus Q squared formula. But you do have to be able to, um, to know what those variables stand for. It's the P plus Q equals 1 formula that you end up using more than the other. All right, one more. Population of mice, 300 are brown and 100 are white. Brown is dominant. Okay, so brown is dominant. That means white is recessive. Now, this is really important because people mess this up. Um, the brown does not help us. Because if brown is dominant, that would include all of our homozygous ones and all of our heterozygous ones. And that can't really give us any information. But if white is recessive, we know that our recessive ones are purebred. And so our white ones can give us Q squared. So 100 are white, 300 are brown. That means we have a total of 400. So now this time they gave us raw numbers. You cannot use, obviously, raw numbers in this formula. We need frequencies. So how do we get the frequency of white ones? Well, 100 are white out of 400 total. 
that means that 0.25 is Q squared. And now, just like in the other problems, it's very simple to figure this, the rest of it out. The square root of that, 0.5, is going to be Q, which means P is also going to be 0.5. And they want to know how many are heterozygous. So to get the frequency of heterozygous, 2PQ is going to be 2 times 0.5 times 0.5, which actually ends up being 0.5. And when they say how many, and this is a common thing they'll ask on the AP exam, how many individuals are actually heterozygous? Um, what you're gonna do is take your frequency times the total population, make sure it's times the total population, not just times the dominant ones, and 0.5 times 400 which is basically gives us 200. So the actual number of heterozygous ones would be 200. Now, that should make sense. We had 100 that were white. That would mean 200, we'd say, are big B, little b. And that means the other 100 would have to be big B, big B. So that makes perfect sense um, that, that we would get those answers. OK. So this last problem requires a calculator, like I said, but it's the same principle as the prior problem. So first thing that we need to do is which flowers are going to help us, the red or the white? The white, because white is recessive, therefore from the white, what variable can we get? Right. So from the white ones, we know we can get Q squared, but obviously 557 is not Q squared, right? To get Q squared, it's going to be 557 over the total plants, which happens to be 953. So again, this one needs, you need a calculator. I mean, you could do it in your head if you really wanted to, um, but you probably don't. So Q squared ends up being, in this case, 0.58. Now that I have Q squared, what's my next step? I need to take the square root of it to get Q. Now, just a quick comment on this. Don't assume you did something wrong because when you take the square root of a decimal, you're going to get a, a bigger number. So if you take the square root of 0.58, you're going to get that Q is equal to 0.76. But a lot of people did it and assumed they did something wrong. Because obviously when you take the square root of a whole number, you get a smaller number. But that's not the case when you take the square root of a decimal. So if Q is 0.76, what's P? Yes, 1 minus 0.76. So that's going to give us 0.24. So there's P and Q. The last thing they want is the actual number of homozygous dominant plants. What variable is that going to be? Correct. So what they're asking us for is P squared. And again, when you square this, it's going to look like you did something wrong because you're going to get a smaller number. So you get 0 0.0576 is P squared times the total number of plants was 953. And therefore, the actual number, they're going to tell you to round the nearest whole number because you can't have an eighth of a plant or whatever. Um, and that's going to come up to 55 plants. And so that's, that's, in essence, that's how you do the math for this chapter. They don't get any harder.